We're good to go, Tracy? Yes. <clears throat> thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, and thank you everyone for uh, taking taking some time this afternoon to participate in this meeting. Um, and we will actually have uh, one item pa past warden. Uh, Ms. Bester is going to de deliver a message prior to the rest of the meeting uh, proceeding. So we'll turn it over to uh, Mark. Thanks very much, uh, Mr. Chair. I, I just wanted to take, and actually, if I can, Tracy, can we have everybody's uh, everybody's um, cameras on for this, please? And thank you. Right, everybody. Um, I just wanted to thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, nice to see some faces uh, that I, I certainly know well, um, and I, and I haven't been able to to be in touch with as much lately. Uh, I went back in as warden with uh, Council Brzee. God bless his sweet little pea pick and soul when he ran for and was elected as uh, MPP. And I know you've got another year in your term with the accessibility, but I just, on behalf of all of council, I wanted to thank all of you, both the, the, the appointees as well as staff that support so much that goes on with accessibility. Uh, I, I think, and, and certainly not, not to point out one person, but I'm going to be, it is uh, never argue with Tracy because she's really got this down pat. Uh, it's it's great leadership. Uh, it, it so good to see all uh, the tiers represented and and one resource to go to. So I, I just wanted to say thank you. This will be the last time you'll see me on this screen and on a few screens that uh, that I'm going to to be disappearing from. But to know that this committee is up and going and as well organized as what it is and being as as uh, as visible and, and a, as knowledgeable as they are. It just makes it so much easier for politicians to be able to reach out and get the uh, get the information that we need. So on behalf of council and myself, thank you very much for all that you've done. Uh, I will let you carry on with this meeting and your speakers. I, I don't wanna get in your way. And, and again, thanks. Don't worry, you're not getting rid of me forever. I'll still be around to plague you with questions and. Uh, it's it's not not that easy for uh, for me to go. Patricia, you have to move that plant that's in behind you, because just like wasn't it Alan that had the lady call her from Tennessee or anything and say that she had a plant growing out of her head? Well, you've got a plant growing out of your head. <laughs> so, <laughs> thanks very much, everyone. I'll sign off now and have a good meeting. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Marg, for your, your kind words to the committee and to all of the, the people who support the committee. Uh, very much appreciated. And we certainly wish you all the best too in whatever you will be involved with in the future, which I'm sure will be something. Okay, uh, prior to a motion to approve the agenda, we're gonna add one item, which will be 5C. It'll be um, a trunk or treat event that is uh, planned for Addington Highlands. And at that time, Patricia Gray will speak to it. So can we have a motion to approve the agenda as noted? Moved by Kelly, seconded by Jim. Thank you. Any other comments? Additions? No, none noted. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. <clears throat> Adopt. Uh, I'm not sure, Drew, whether you wanted your sort of image to be yourself live or not. Yeah, and I can see what you're, thanks. <laughs> Uh, adoption of the minutes of, the, of our committee meeting, 12th of April, 2000, in 
22. Motion to approve those. Oops, sorry, Jim. Seconder. Someone. I'm looking around here. Well, second. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Yep. Okay. Thanks. And you're on, Drew, you're on, well, yeah, you are on mute. So I don't mind if all the committee members come off mute if you wish. It's up to you. Disclosure of pecuniary interest and the general nature thereof. None noted. Delegations and presentations. We have striving for fully inclusive communities. And Bryce, are you our guest? Are you going to speak to this? I guess so. That's fine Thank with me. Um, Thank you. No problem, and sorry for the confusion. I, uh, I confirmed with Peter that he would be on this meeting, uh, but uh, maybe he got confused with the timing or something like that. Um, but um, do you want, uh, I know he didn't have a slideshow plan, but I have one that would keep me on track so I can follow along with that by myself or I can share my screen. Nope. You can share the screen, it is fine with me. Sure. Uh, yeah, then everyone sure can if see. If you can do that, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm not considered one of the hosts. Is that right? I'm not sure if that is, is that how it works on here. Yeah. Tracy may need to help you. Yeah, you should be able to share. Um, but if you can't, I can allow it. Yeah, I think you have to allow it because I don't see anywhere that I can share. Oh, yes, I do. Sorry. Right there. Huh. Um, everybody see that? Uh, yes. yes, yes, we can. All right, so uh, thanks for having me, everyone. And um, again, sorry that Peter's not able to join us. He, uh, Peter is our director of public, public policy. So I thought it would be more appropriate for him to speak to, to this meeting, um, but I am, um, the local for this region, so uh, I guess also appropriate. Um, my name is uh, Bryce Donald. I'm the Regional Services Coordinator for Spinal Cord Injury Ontario in uh, southeastern Ontario. Um, so um, briefly, uh, Spinal Cord Injury Ontario uh, works with clients directly. We have boots on the ground to help uh, people live the life that they choose uh, in a fully inclusive Ontario, hopefully. Um, so great to be on this meeting. Um, and we also uh, certainly partner with many other organizations and, and our clients to, uh, to, to help support and advocate for them to, uh, to achieve that vision. Uh, so we are all over, all over Ontario. Um, we have different programs. Mine again is uh, regional services coordination. Uh, I work directly with clients to connect them with practical resources and services, uh, including equipment, to um, help them live the life that they choose. Um, another big staple of our organization is our peer program, where we have uh, peer coordinators and peer volunteers that help people um, connect with somebody who maybe has a similar level of injury or a similar uh, or a same gender. Um, same interests, similar age, to try to um, give them ideas on their lived experience and how they've lived independently and successfully with a spinal cord injury. Uh, as I mentioned also, we have an advocacy division, which Peter is the head of uh, the Director of Public Policy. Um, we have a number of um, advocacy streams that, uh, that we are working on right now, which I'll get into a little bit later. Um, and again, we, um, we are all over Ontario. We have um, somebody in each region across Ontario. So it's a fairly big organization um, and we try to reach uh, every person in Ontario with a spinal cord injury. Um, important to note that we don't necessarily take on everybody as a client when they're referred to us, 
but we hope that everybody will get referred to us and know who we are so that when they maybe a year later are struggling with something at home or as they age, um, they know who we are and that they can reach out to us. Or they may be interested in one program, but not the other. And uh, uh, But at the same time, they're still connected with our community. Um, another part of that is, again, building, building the community um, to create just simply buying power for the government to realize that there is this group of people and that they need services and support. Uh, so again, these are the lists of our regions, um, but again, these regions in one way or another do cover all of Ontario. Uh, so uh, peer support, again, I mentioned, uh, it's a huge staple of our program as it has been from day one back after the, uh, the, the end of World War II, really, um, helping to learn how to live with an injury. I mean, therapists and and people like myself who are uh, who have have been around injury and and uh, learned about it over the years. Um, I have have the expertise and stuff, but there's nothing like somebody who's been there and done that um, to to tell you how how to get through it and how to uh, to adapt. Um, so that's um, certainly a big huge part of our organization and and what we uh, try to connect people with. Just a couple of quotes here from um, peers and people who have been been supported by a peer. And so again, then regional services coordination, um, just supporting independence and in, in as much as possible. And obviously, there's some people who maybe aren't able to be completely independent, but um, at least we can try to um, uh, connect them with the resources that make them. Um, autonomous uh, or able to uh, pull on those resources to get back to the life that they choose with the people that they they want, get back to a family relationship um, as opposed to a caregiver relationship, and just making sure that they know other resources that can help them do that. Um, I would say a lot of our clients are looking for equipment, and so we often have a, an equipment goal, um, whether we try to find donated equipment, help find um, the appropriate funding streams for equipment uh, and connect them with therapists that can promote or, or uh, suggest the, the appropriate equipment for them. So uh, our regional services stream can help with uh, many, many things. And we can also help with any mobility impairment, not necessarily just a spinal cord injury because we find that there is quite a bit of overlap um, spinal cord injury on the peer side is sort of is, is a bit of a niche thing. It's a very um, can can be a very traumatic experience. And so um, our peer side is a little bit more specific to spinal cord injury. But when we're talking about mobility impairments, um, housing, finding funding, uh, finding health um, resources, uh, information on sexuality, equipment, transportation, uh, those are all things that maybe can have some overlap between disabilities. So uh, regional services coordination does help with um, with those uh, streams. Uh, so again, I mentioned uh, that Peter is our head of our advocacy and and um, uh, public policy uh, streams. Um, there are a number of streams, including um, access to mobility devices, um, so wheelchairs, um, uh, patient lifts and whatnot. Um, uh, wheelchairs, I mean, they're covered 75% by the government, which seems like a lot, but I don't, I, I don't know. Um, this is my sort of take on the whole thing is that, um, people are still paying an, a 25% fee to move around their home or something like that. And I don't understand why that is. Um, and when, when you think of 75%, you think that's a big chunk, but when you think, think about a 20 to $30,000 power wheelchair, you're paying five to $7,000 out of pocket. Um, so if you're not helped by any other programs like ODSP, you're covered, you're not covered for, for a lot. And not, a, not everybody has $5,000 lying around for a, a wheelchair that they need to move at all. So 
Um, other supplies that aren't covered necessarily are um, commodes, uh, hospital beds are a big one. Um, uh, other equipment, um, just, just sometimes niche uh, items that uh, are very specific to clients um, that um, that just don't get covered or aren't on the ADP list. Uh, catheters uh, are not covered by the government. So if you need to pee, you have to pay to pee, which is wildly, I, I don't understand that either. Um, so that is a big program for us that we're trying to talk to the government and get the government to understand the, the real issue there. Um, healthcare, of course. Um, we all know that there's a big difficulty in finding uh, family doctors. And when you couple that with a spinal cord injury, you need a lot of referrals and you need them kind of now. So it can be very difficult for somebody with a spinal cord injury and no family doctor to get healthcare. And again, again, I apologize that uh, Peter's not here. I wish he could speak in more detail to all of these. Um, but the AODA commitment is obviously a huge issue in in uh, in Canada. Um, it's been behind for years that I've that I've known about. And we'd like to get to the point where we can say, okay, we've done everything, and now people can access the community at large. Uh, so the, again, we had, we do have a P for free campaign. That's uh, sort of the um, the play on words that they've uh, that they've come up with. Um, and I think there's coming up with a new. This is new as of last week that I heard about that they're coming up with a campaign um, called uh, P it forward um, to uh, to help raise some funds to to advocate for these for these initiatives or for this initiative especially. Um, Uh, if you're interested in more information, we do have quite a robust and uh, informative website. Um, our website uh, does cover all those like resources that I that I mentioned, um, but also can direct you to other um, education streams and um, and just uh, null or um, um, just pieces of information that that uh, may be pertinent to spinal cord injury or mobility impairment. Um, one stream is called uh, Core Tree. We have a, an education, um, a, di a disability education center, which um, has interactive videos and uh, programs around all different topics around spinal cord injury, uh, whether it's related to health, mobility, um, uh, and there's also a, um, a program called. Uh, core tree TV where people with spinal injuries or or any mobility impairment can go on upload videos of do, them doing everyday things that um, may be difficult for somebody in a wheelchair and shows other people how to do such a thing um, or just discusses their 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 issues and and how they've overcome them Uh, so again, our, our website, um, sciontario.org. Um, there is, I, I don't know if you need to know about our referral sources, but there is a way you can make referrals on there if you do have anybody that's in need of services from us. Um, I think I changed, yeah, so I changed this. Uh, I added this uh, little arrow in the quick links button will take you to our referral page and you can submit, submit it right online. Or at the top of the referral page, there is an... Um, a uh, PDF of the referral. Just a little closer. Um, so that's the end of this formal sort of presentation, but I know that Peter um, had, um, had discussed uh, some of the notes that he wanted to talk about. Um, and I just received a message. He thought the meeting was next week um and he's up north camping so sorry about that um does anybody have any questions right off the bat of, of, after the presentation uh, bryce i have one question sure <clears throat> it's really a question of uh <clears throat> funding how are you funded 
So about 80 percent. Uh, I, I can't test. I, I know that we do have. Um, we are a charity, um, but 80 about 80 percent of our programs are funded uh, by the Ministry of Health and Long Term Care. Um, so I know I believe that's where my funding. But then we do have that 20 percent that is uh, covered by. We do have a fundraising. Um, um, department or a, a resource development department um, where we're funded by other fundraising efforts and sponsorships. Um, but good question. And I do think um, that we do have uh, an actual breakdown of that every year from our annual general meeting. So it is publicly accessed and I can certainly try to get that to you. Um, after. Thank you. Are there, are there any other questions? No, I just wanted to thank you, Bryce, for coming on today. I appreciate all your help and uh, uh, you've had a very uh, knowledgeable presentation and I thank you for that. Thank you. So I know, um, I don't know how much time we have left and feel free to cut me off anytime, but I know Peter um, had talked about doing an overview of SCIO, which you've done. Uh, he wanted to highlight uh, some of the municipal successes we've been able to facilitate. So. Um, for one thing, I know that uh, I myself, uh, as the service coordinator, work very closely and we've made some, some really good inroads with uh, Providence Care and KGH uh, to, to make sure to try to um, reach all of those, uh, all people with spinal cord injury in Ontario. We're in at the uh, rounds now um, at uh, every week at, spinal, at the spinal cord injury rounds at Providence Care. Um, so we see at least see that how, how many people with spinal cord injuries are, are there and to try to make sure we're matching the referrals with who's there. So uh, we had, in the last six months, we've had a really big uptick in referrals and we're getting most at least um, spinal cord injury referrals in this area. Um, also just really great connections at KGH just uh, from personal friends and personal people that, that I know that work there. Um, uh, what else? Uh, municipal successes. Um, I, I would say as a whole, as an agency, um, we do hold different events and stuff to to raise funds. Um, one particular program that I'm proud of, um, that I'm uh, actually also the chair of, is the Enhancing Independence Program. Uh, I think it's newly being called the Equipment for Independence Program, where we raise funds and we have a sort of a small pool of funding, I would say, to help people with those pieces of equipment that fall through the gaps that that people need, that the government really isn't seeing the need for. So that's uh, one program that I'm, I'm particularly, pr particularly proud of. Um, there are regional streams of funding for that and also a full a, a provincial pot that people can access um, if they are clients of ours. Um, and then I think he wanted to narrow in on a project we were working on with respect to accessible parking. Um, I, I don't know exactly the details around that, so I, I can't really speak to it, but um, I, I would perhaps, given that this is uh, sort of the Napanee area, correct, is, is the LNA is Napanee and North. Can you, can you clarify the... Yeah, so... <clears throat> It, it covers uh, four municipalities in the far stretching, it's stretching north to the Denby area, so north of Mazinaw Lake. Right. Um, and, and one thing that I was going to bring up, I wasn't sure how appropriate for this meeting it would be, but um, is um, the issue of transportation, especially within Nap the town of Napanee. Um, I don't know um, if there's something that I don't know about, but I know that um, there isn't necessarily a public transportation that I know of that uh, could act, could um, help with no. people with disabilities. And, and please correct me if I'm wrong, for sure. No, Bryce, there, uh, there is a bus in Deseronto um, that you can call, but I'm not exactly sure how that's still running because they got more funding. So I'm not really sure how that works. They, did you say they, did get more, they did get more funding recently? Yes, yeah, oh, okay. they did. Um, okay. But as far as hearing that, then you know there isn't um, any transportation. Right, and inter-community transportation as well. I know that I've recently had somebody um, 
needing transportation, wheelchair transportation from Napanee to a medical appointment in, in Kingston and the best we could find, cheapest we could find was something like $200 with a wheel, uh, a taxi company, which is good comparatively, but not sustainable for somebody who's living on a tight, tight budget. And again, yeah, so feel free to direct me uh, to any other um, thoughts you had on um, or um, uh, hopes you had for uh, for my presentation in this meeting. Happy to uh, to expand on on any other um, directions that you wanted to take it in as well. Does anyone have any other questions, comments? I had just one more question, Bryce, is how, if, if you are someone who becomes injured, would every major hospital in Ontario know about your organization and refer them or at least inform them that you exist? That's a great question. Um, and short answer is no. Long answer is we are um, working to try to formalize our referral process and uh, make it sort of a more guaranteed form, um, referral process with memorandums of understanding um, with the hospital so that given all the turnover that's been going on with hospitals um, and, and just not having the same people in line that when uh, turnover happens, um, these understandings are in place and they they continue to make the referrals come in. Um, it's also been our hope that we are at the forefront of the, the new, um, uh, what are they called? Ontario health teams across the province. Uh, however, there's supposed to be like 35 of them or something or, or a lot of them. So um, difficult for all of our or for, for our frontline staff or one public policy staff to, uh, to, to reach out to all 35 of those. It's, it's a bit of a difficult situation, but um, I mean, the, the pipe dream uh, is to be um, a, ref, uh, a guaranteed referral. We're, we're not technically part of the circle of care, though we do work very closely with the rehab hospitals or any, any referral sources. Um, but it, we're not the, you know, we're not the Lynn, um, we're not, uh, we're not within the hospital, so we don't get the, the guaranteed referrals, but we're working on those relationships. So thanks for that question. It's, it's a good question. Not all hospitals or the staff within the hospitals know about us, um, but we want them to. Great. <clears throat> Thank you. And I should mention too um, that they, they may not know what our, our current name is, but we were the Canadian Paraplegic Association previously, um, but obviously Spinal Cord Injury Ontario is a more inclusive name. Okay, um, any other questions? Um, no, so I guess there's no further questions. So <clears throat> thank you very much, Bryce, for... Uh, Thanks Thank you again. Time this afternoon and, and uh, pitch hitting. <laughs> Thanks so much for having uh, me and your patience. Um, I'll uh, hope I'll see if Peter can view this presentation and add anything that I wasn't able to touch on. Um, was I meant to stick around for the rest of the presentations? Happy to, if so. No, Bryce, you can you can exit now if you like. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks, Bryce. Thank you. Yep. Take care. Bye. I guess we should have a, just a motion to receive that presentation. So I'll make a motion moved by Kelly, seconded by uh, it's Drew. Sorry, I gotta watch your hand there, Drew. Uh, all in favor? Carried. Yep, got your hand. Thank you. <clears throat> Under matters for consideration, item one. A, the uh, town of Greater Napanee, it's, I guess it's a purchase and update on uh, a new uh, town office building. So, Michael or Mike? Or oh, thanks for having me. Turn it over um, to you. Thanks. 
Yeah, happy. I apologize. The uh, attached drawing is not the best. We're still waiting for official drawings, but did want to share with what we had. We're really excited to uh, be in a position to shortly be the new owners of 99 Advance Avenue, uh, which has been a um, administration building that's provided um, a number of different public services uh, to Napanee and its surrounding area. And as the municipality, we're purchasing it to consolidate some of our services. So we're currently spread out through a number of different buildings uh, around town uh, that requires our citizens to move from location to location, uh, from service to service. This purchase allows us to actually consolidate those into one building and have a one-stop shop for all of our citizens for all of their needs, which uh, one is good from our um, citizens' point of view, but it's also really nice to have all of our staff in one building. Um, which is our goal uh, to be there shortly. We have no immediate plans to move in right away. Uh, we will be phasing uh, that move into the new building as we better understand exactly what we have and what we've purchased. For the purposes of uh, this meeting, um, again, I apologize. The uh, detailed uh, drawings are probably tough to read. And I know there's got some highlighting on there, you can, which you can disregard. But there are a few things that we should note um, from an accessibility standpoint. Um, the main access to the public is in the main floor. It is double wide doors um, and is accessible through automated doors and or push button doors. Um, we'll be doing some renovations to the uh, uh, setup, I believe for the uh, community access entrance um, where we'll have some accessible counters and we'll have some uh, digital kiosks as well uh, for customers from a self-serve standpoint is, is our goal in the near future. Uh, there's an elevator available uh, to get up to the second floor, uh, fully functioning, and um, uh, the building is also uh, currently fitted with a fitness room, uh, which we don't plan to make any changes to, um, and that fitness room also has fully accessible bathrooms and uh, shower facilities, uh, which are really nice uh, for us to have, as well as the tenants in that building, which um, are the multi center uh, uh, public health and um, um, family and children's services. So yeah, happy to answer any questions you might have or if there's any additional information you might've been looking for. Oh, sorry, I should mention, not that it's open for the public, but um, for at least the Malpy Center, they do have a playground in the backyard. Uh, it is uh, an accessible playground or play set up uh, as well. So it actually has the rubberized uh, matting, right? So wheelchairs can roll over that quite nicely um, and it has ramp access um, uh, to, uh, to allow for play for uh, all individuals. Thank you, Michael. Are there questions for Michael? Go ahead, Kelly. Michael, I just wanted to say that I uh, worked in that building when uh, it was first uh, built by Family and Children's Services. So I know the layout of the building quite well. My question is, um, in order to get into the offices, there was a key card access. Is that going to be removed? I don't believe so. I think we still have the office area uh, required to have key card access to get in and out of the offices to separate that from the public. Okay. My only question is, <laughs> uh, although I had a key card um, and could access the offices, I often got stuck. Uh, because I couldn't access the key card and open the door at the same time. So okay. from an employer, like an employee perspective, it just isn't safe. Um, so if you were to hire somebody who had a disability and were in a wheelchair, they get like stuck. So, so if I understand correctly, the key card or proximity reader for the key card and the location for opening the doors it. are too far apart? it only gives you a few minutes to open the door. So if you take longer than that, you're... I, I do know it's on our list of things <laughs> that our IT department currently has. Um, I think they were actually looking to upgrade uh, some of the proximity access points throughout the building, um, change them in or add more, but I'll, I'll definitely make note of that and make sure okay. that that's, just that's thinking, a simple programming fix uh, that we could easily do. I was just thinking from an employee perspective, I didn't want anybody else to get stuck from point A to point B. I agree. Thanks, so. Kelly. That's a good question. Um, any other questions? <clears throat> yes, not. So thank you, Michael, very much for uh, giving us a 
quick update on on the plans, and I'm sure everybody there is pretty excited. To... Yeah, I think I think most people can't wait to get into uh, the one building and, and be all together for the first right. time in probably a very long time. But uh, yeah. yeah, thank you, and um, thanks Kelly for the comment. And happy to hear uh, any other ideas that may be out there how we can make that the most accessible building for not just our citizens but our staff. Great. Th okay. Thanks, Mike. We have a motion to receive uh, Michael's presentation. Moved by Jim, seconded by. I can do it. Oh, Drew. Drew got it, I guess. Thank you. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. Next item in 1B is the staff report on Loyalist Township Municipal Office accessibility improvements. Carrie, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you everybody for having me. Uh, so just a quick update from Loyalist as it relates to our municipal offices. This is the building that's on Main Street in Odessa, uh, which is where our main uh, corporate um, services is, uh, including council chambers. So. It is a, a building that's open to the public and we've had some challenges in the past with accessibility. Um, although we currently do have uh, such things as automatic door openers and that in place, they certainly don't meet today's standard in terms of barrier-free width and things of that sort. So I just wanted to bring a quick update on behalf of the township uh, to the committee as we do have some planned work coming up at this building. Uh, to start with, there's four sets of double doors that will receive double door openers instead of single um, that will provide the required clearance to both gain access to the building into the main lobby area as well as the customer service area and council chambers, uh, which is an important area that currently doesn't have any uh, automatic door openers to it. So that work will be done uh, this fall. Uh, unfortunately, we have been plagued with the supplier issue. Uh, so. We are currently waiting uh, to hear when that equipment will arrive, but uh, as soon as it arrives, it will be installed. To take it further, at the customer service desk, uh, that area will be reconfigured to both widen the gate that goes from the customer area to the back spaces. Uh, it certainly does not meet the standard today, as well as the desk will be lowered in a spot with the proper leg clearance underneath uh, so that anybody in a mobility device would be able to come up and receive service at the appropriate height. Um, in council chambers, we're going further. We've actually already received a portable ramp. Our council chambers, are, our desk is up, council desk is up two steps. Uh, and is not currently accessible. So we do have a portable ramp that has been uh, received and is on site. Um, however, what we are experiencing is, is to go from the council platform to the back office area, there are still some stairs. So the drawings attached to the staff report today do have some plans outlined where we will actually be putting in a new door and a new ramp on the other side of the wall to allow access to that back space from the council table area. Um, so that area, that, um, that work does require some permits and it will be put out for proper procurement uh, for that to happen. Uh, but in the meantime, people will still be able to access the council uh, platform from the front of the room with that portable ramp. We also have two doorways that currently don't meet the required width, one being into that area where that new ramp is being built and the other into a meeting room in Odessa that is used for uh, a variety of meetings, both with the public as well as by our council. Uh, so those doorways are being widened as part of this project as well. So um, attached to the staff report is the detailed drawings of the work to be done. And I would be happy to answer any questions that committee members may have. Thank you, Carrie. Are there any questions for Carrie? on their uh, planned, I guess, renovations, improvements. No, I guess, I guess there are none, Carrie. Looks like you have a, a project in the works and all the best when procurement because uh, that's a challenge these days. So thanks again for taking the time. We have a motion to receive um, your presentation, please. Goodbye, Drew. Second goodbye, Kelly. 
All in favor? Gary, thank you. Okay, item two is Loyalist Township's upcoming initiatives and projects. So I think it's Luke McDonald and Carrie Lamb. Someone's going to lead it. Luke, there you are. I'll yes. turn it over to you, Luke. Thanks, and Carrie. Thank you very much, Tony, and uh, happy to see everyone here today. Uh, so this report, uh, we've just outlined a couple objectives from it. So the first is we've identified some of the engineering initiatives coming up for the next uh, year uh, and some of the projects as well. Um, so just going through those items there, I'm not going to go through each one in detail, uh, but they kind of lump into three general categories. Uh, so the first one is uh, sort of reports and studies. So we're looking at things like our infrastructure master plan and identifying sidewalks, connection pieces that we need as well as active transportation, um, the Amherst View West Secondary Plan, urban design guidelines. So we're looking at things like benches and uh, planters and different items like that, as well as some engineering technical guidelines. Um, and then the next batch of items that we'll, I, I've identified there are some road reconstruction jobs where we're looking to include some pedestrian crossings and. Uh, new sidewalk sections and multi-use pathways and items like that. And then the uh, last batch of uh, projects there are some facility projects that we have coming up for the next year. So the Odessa Fire Hall, the Millhaven Garage, and the Community Hub. Um, so I've identified these uh, just to help with sort of the second uh, objective of this report. Uh, so I am uh, new to my role here at the township. I came from the city of Kingston previously where I was in facilities there. Uh, so I was quite familiar with their municipal accessibility advisory committee and, and working through that process. But you'll see the, the sec second objective of the report is just uh, some of the questions that I had just to help me understand um, the best way to consult with this group and, and get feedback and, and different items like that. Um, so I'm just looking to understand if there's any uh, project forms to be filled out or um, if the documentation is done strictly through these meetings or, or what that process looks like. So I may call on Tracy. Can you help explain how this works, Tracy? Please. Cer certainly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so they can be provided through these meetings, or if it happens to be fall between meetings, we're happy to circulate via email. Um, I see that at the end of the report, you were asking that possibly a, another meeting to discuss these things. And I think that committee members, not to speak for them, but I think they'll be happy to accommodate that. We would just need some type of timing because the accessibility committee meetings are part of the schedule that is approved by county council at their inaugural meeting in December. Sure, so that's that's great, Tracy, and thank you very much, because that also sort of touches on the second question there, which was just the consultation process outside of the meetings. Um, so just understanding, is it Tracy then who is the point of contact that would then distribute the materials um, to get feedback on designs and, and things like that? Um, you can send it to Jennifer Nielsen here at the County of Lennox and Addington. Jennifer Nielsen, perfect, thank you. Um, and then just some general questions as well. Just want to make sure that we're including information that's that's of interest to you guys and, and pertinent. So in design documents, are there you know specific guidelines or anything like that that you're looking for? I know you know City of Kingston has their facility accessibility design standards, um, uh, which you know it lays out some guidelines that follow ADA and some that go above and beyond. So just making sure. If there's any specific items of note that you guys are looking for, or if there's, uh, you know, general information that would be helpful when we're we're providing documents. Um, again, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, so we don't have our own FADs for Lennox and Addington County, but I think the committee are most interested in um, the accessibility features. Um, I mean, if there are anything that's above and beyond, then that's awesome. And of course, they'd love to know that too. So, sure. Excellent. 
Thank you. And then, so the last item on the report here is just on the community hub project. And so I will let Carrie go over the, uh, the scope of the works and some of the more technical information as she's much more familiar with that side of, of it than I am. So Carrie, if you want to take over. Thanks, Luke. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chair and committee. Um, this project is a long time coming. We are still in very much the preliminary plans for this. Uh, if any of you are familiar with the W.J. Henderson Recreation Center in Amherst, you'll know that we have accessibility challenges at the facility. So currently our pool is closed. Uh, the inf infrastructure is beyond its lifespan and is just not safe to operate. So the pool is closed um, and we are making plans to build a new aquatic facility in its place. The aquatic facility will consist of an eight lane, 25 meter pool with a smaller leisure pool. Um, all of the required accessibility um, features above and beyond today's current code will be included from ramps, change rooms, access to the facility, door widths, automatic door openers, all of those types of things. Um, the, the small leisure pool will be a, war, a warmer pool, probably more of a 92 degrees Celsius, uh, 92 degrees Fahrenheit which would allow us to use it as a therapy pool at times as well. So it's gonna give us some great new features for the community. At the same time that we're building the new pool uh, aquatic uh, facility, we will be undergoing a very extensive accessibility um, upgrades to the facility. So a, a, an elevator is going to be installed from the main level down to the arena level um, with a proper stairway. Uh, around it. All of our meeting rooms, uh, we'll actually be adding a meeting room and widening doorways. Uh, we'll be addressing the washrooms on the lower level that currently when you go into them, you have to go down three stairs, not accessible. Um, so there's a variety of things that are going to be taken care of, entrances coming into the facility, all of the required, uh, where we can, we'll look at doing uh, automatic door, uh, sliding doors, so you don't even have to hit a button uh, versus the automatic door openers where appropriate. So there's quite a lot that's gonna be done. We are right now working with an architect to uh, come up with those, I'll say draft drawings, which detailed drawings, which will then we will be doing a very aggressive public consultation process. And as my colleague Luke alluded to, we would look to this committee to do consultation on the facility, on the design to ensure that um, you, know, you are fully consulted and that we aren't uh, missing something that we've uncovered every stone we possibly can in that moving forward, not just today, but 10, 15, 20 years down the road, that everything we're, we're, we're doing is being addressed appropriately. That, that would include the outside site works as well. So everything from the arrival experience, coming into the facility, sidewalks, those types of things, it will all be addressed. So I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Uh, as I said, it's still very much preliminary phase, but we felt uh, my colleague and I were chatting and we feel a separate meeting uh, to review those plans uh, may be warranted. It's gonna be quite an extensive renovation and build for our community and it's an important one. So um, on that note, I would be happy to answer any questions that you may have. I have, I'll turn it over to others. I have one question, Carrie, is um, what's, what do you think the timing of that meeting would be? What months, do you have a, a guess? I can certainly guess, and I know Luke will probably jump in here. We've we originally had goals of starting public consultation in November. It's most likely going to be, I'll say, the first four months or so into 2023 that you'll at least be hearing from us to move forward with that consultation. So we have yet to do a finalized, um, detailed design that we're ready to take. We're also working to bring forward. Uh, reports to new committee, our new council, sorry, in the new year. So um, there's a lot of I's that needed to be dotted and T's crossed in order to make that happen. The consultations will be with different group customer groups. Um, our, for instance, our swim club, Special Olympics, who spends time in our facility, all of our hockey and ice users, those types. So this community, this, this committee would be included in that, but it would most likely be into 2023 before we're ready to do that consultation. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Gary. <clears throat> so, uh, Tracy, so then they can just uh, send this request to Jennifer. Is, would that be the process if they, you know, that they, they, you know, when they have an idea during what month they want to have this meeting? Yes, certainly that works. Yeah. Or, I mean, if you're, if you're doing other public consultations and you wanted one session to be done virtually with this group, that can happen too. whatever works for the township. 
<clears throat> okay. Um, are there any questions for Carrie or Luke on on the, their presentation report? Go ahead, Kelly. Carrie, everything that sounds wonderful, and I realize this may be a little early to tell, um, but is the access to the pool going to be accessible? Like to actually get in the pool? That's, that, if I may, Mr. Chair. That is correct, Kelly. There is a ramp that is being built right into the pool so that it is accessed directly in your mobility device directly into the pool, both the pool, the large pool and the leisure pool. Okay, thank you very much. Fantastic. You're welcome. Um, just for me here, Carrie, uh, I would definitely be really interested in working with you guys on this project. Um, I spent my 10 years of my life at the pool. I know I didn't send out as a lifeguard and swim instructor also for the township. Um, and I'm also an accessibility uh, consultant uh, It's the Rick Hansen Foundation. So um, just to make sure that we kind of all pull through my, all, all my accessibility stuff and make sure you guys have the like latest going above and beyond if that works for you guys. Great. Mr. Chair, that, that's wonderful. We, we're happy to have any additional looks at the plans and assistance and, and feedback. So we'd certainly be reaching out. Great. Thanks, thanks Drew and, and, and Kelly for bringing those, those points up. Certainly appreciated. Any other questions for Carrie or Luke? None. So um, thanks, Carrie and Luke, for bringing us updated in the project. And I'm sure we'll be talking with you down the road during the consultation phase. We have a motion to receive their presentation report. Moved by Jim, seconded by. Oh, Drew, thank you. Um, all, all in just, favor? Just before we have the yes. question, can we add on the recommendation as well um, for the additional meeting outside nor the normal two per year and just with the date to be determined or something? Sure. Okay. Thank that's, you. That's fine with that's fine with mover and seconder. Yep. Okay. You okay with that, Tracy? Jennifer, whoever's recording. <laughs> Certainly, that's fine. Great. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. Next item on our agenda is item three, the fourth legislative review of the AODA. Turn that over to you, Tracy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I don't have a lot to add to the report. I just wanted to... Um, bring forward the information that I had been part of the review with AMCTO and AMO, um, meeting with the um, reviewer, Mr. Rich Donovan. Um, I think it's going to be a fulsome review and, and uh, it's not uh, scheduled to be complete until uh, well into 2023. Uh, I did also receive some information just earlier today that I will send out to the committee after this, that there will be a few town hall type meetings with uh, Mr. Donovan in order for other people to be able to register and um, participate in the review. So I'd be pleased to answer any questions the committee may have on the report. I have, I have a question, Tracy. So um, is this something that the, the lower tier municipalities themselves should be sort of on there? Should they be having at least a discussion or informing the councils eventually that this will be going on? And if anyone has any input, at least there was an opportunity there to consult with the lower tiers. Certainly. So when I'll send these links out, it's two, um, I believe one is later this month and the other is early November that these two town hall meetings are. So I'll send them to everyone on this committee and that way um, all four of the local municipalities will have that information. That'd be great. I mean, some may not have any input, but even, even one 
even one or two items uh, certainly could be important. Thank, thank you. Yes. Any questions for Tracy? Thank you, Tracy, for the update. We have a motion to receive Tracy's uh, presentation. Moved by Jim, seconded by Drew. There we go. All in favor? Carried, thank you. Okay, the next item is the Government of Ontario Enabling Accessibility Fund. And I believe it's Jennifer. Hi, thank you, Mr. Hi, Jennifer. So this is just a, a quick report to let everyone know uh, that this funding is available to support infrastructure improvements, uh, such as renovation construction, it can also be used um, for some uh, like IT type projects as well. Um, I have attached a link at the bottom of this report that gives you all the details on uh, how to apply for the funding, the type of projects that are eligible, what's not eligible, those kind of things. Uh, and the deadline for that is November 1st of this year. And I believe you can. Um, apply for up to $100,000 per project, one project per uh, establishment. And all the information is attached to that link at the bottom of the report, if anybody has any mm. questions. I suspect, I'm not sure, I can't remember, the lower tiers are aware of this already, Jennifer? Most likely, I would think so, yeah. yes, but yes. just to be sure. So what I mean, bring it to mention that is, yeah, because they only have three weeks, which which is yeah. not unusual. In, no, yeah. no, not at so all. It's always a case of having your uh, being prepared when these when, for when these grants come come up. Yes, that's right. Yeah, is there are there any questions for Jennifer? I mean, you know, I only comment is it's great that there are these funding opportunities because I, I certainly we're all aware of many projects that actually get done through these uh, special funding initiatives and uh, where municipalities and other organizations <clears throat> probably could barely afford to even to do them out of, out of their ta normal taxpayer uh, dollars. Yes, and it's just kind of a reminder too for the lower tiers that if they know of any other organizations uh, within their jurisdictions that are eligible for this funding, they may want to pass that information along. Yeah. That's great. Any questions for Jennifer? <clears throat> no. Nope. My voice is holding out. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> okay. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. Thanks, Jennifer. Thank Appreciate you. it. Okay. Item uh, five. I think they all relate to trunk or treat events. So <clears throat> 5A is Loyalist Townships event. Lindsay, you, you can go ahead. Wonderful, hi everyone. Thank you, Chair, can you hear me okay? Wonderful. Um, yeah, so Loyalist Township is very excited to be hosting its first trunk or treat event coming up um, this October. So our date is Sunday, October 30th, and the event will take place from 1 until 4 at the Odessa Fairgrounds. Um, we're teaming up with the Agricultural Society, who traditionally hosts um, a fun family Halloween event um, that date and time. So the township is going to partner with them to bring a trunk or treat event to the community. Um, we've had lots of great uptake. We have um, over 20 vehicles registered so far, and we are still collecting vehicle registration as we go. Um, so we're hoping that the weather is nice and um, that we get lots of kids out to enjoy some um, spook-free, safe, and accessible trick-or-treating. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Any questions for Lindsay? No. Yep. <clears throat> I guess adults can go too, Lindsay. Absolutely. Everybody's <laughs> welcome. And if you'd like, you can even dress up. <laughs> there we go. That's good. Go ahead, Kelly. I just wanted to say that I'm very happy to see these types of events occurring, and I, I look forward to them continuing. Yeah. 
Yeah, they're uh, they're great events. I we have some in our township. Uh, Patricia will speak to it later, but uh, yeah, they're good. Okay, thanks, Lindsay, and I'll just on to you, Michael. Yeah, so to build off that, we have a very similar event, a trunk or treat event that's happening at the Strathcona Paper Center, otherwise known as the SPC or the Rink for those within Napanee, and it's taking place on October 30th from 1 to 3. Uh, it's open to everybody. It is uh, an accessible event, and we're encouraging people to either bring a table or decorate your trunk of your vehicle and uh, join the festivities and make it as fun for all. Thank you, Michael. It's no great. And Patricia. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Addington Highlands is uh, pleased to with the announcement of our fifth annual trunk or treat event here in Flinton. It's held at the municipal parking lot at 72 Edward Street. It's going to be on October 31st from 5.30 until 7.30. It's organized by a local community member who has taken this on every year. Um, the township is providing the, the space and will provide the treat accessibility, treat accessibly signage and also uh, post the event on our social media page. And there's uh, free hot dogs for everyone. People typically decorate their cars and they have a pretty good turnout. So it's it's a good event. Thanks, Patricia. Does anyone have any questions to any one of those oh, three presenters on, on, on these events? No? Go ahead, Kelly. I guess I'm just wondering how, um, like how you participate, like do you have to call in advance and say you're interested or do you just like show up? <laughs> like how does that? Great, great question, Kelly. So for Napanee, it is just show up. There's no need to register. Uh, we encourage people to come out and participate and uh, we expect to have a pretty good turnout and lots of space at the SBC. Okay, great, thanks. In Loyalist Township, we are registering vehicles in advance. That way we know how many trunks um, to expect and we can then chat with them about the event um, beforehand. For the um, event itself, um, anybody and everyone's welcome to come trick-or-treating and it's free of charge. Okay. And similarly, similarly to uh, Loyalist Addington Highlands, it, there is a registration for the uh, trunks, but uh, it's open and free of charge for anyone who would like to come. So they'll register their vehicle um, to participate so they know how many they'll have, but uh, otherwise it's just advertising that it's free for anyone to attend. Okay, thanks. Yep. Well, those are three great events. Yes. So depending on where you live, you can, you have your choice of two in the southern part of our uh, area and, and one the in the north, which is which is great. So it's good. And and all we can say is thank you to all the people, the volunteers who put in the effort uh to have this event. And and uh certainly it's accessible and it, and it's fun because it's outside. So I have a motion to receive that information from all three events. Moved by Kelly, seconded by Drew. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. Something to look forward to. Yeah. Item oh, matters for information. Yeah, two matters for information. I have a question on um, Tracy on the tentative meeting schedule. We obviously we're just going to leave that and no changes we made to it. And, and a special meeting will just be dealt with uh, when it arises. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Sure, it, we can just leave it as it is, and that'll be what will be proposed to council unless we hear prior to the December 14th what um, date the Loyalist Township is looking for. Okay, thank you. So I have a motion to receive the matters for information. Moved by Jim, second by Kelly. Are there any questions on either the meeting schedule or Mental Illness Awareness Week?
Uh, no. Okay, all in favor? <clears throat> Carried, thank you. Any other business? Nope. None, so I guess we're near the end. We, first of all, just want thanks everyone, which are all the staff, the presenters and committee members for taking some time this afternoon on a beautiful fall afternoon. When I look out my window, I see nothing but spectacular colors. It is gorgeous up here. So uh, wishing everyone all the best. Enjoy the, your fall and we'll have a motion to adjourn. Moved by Jim, seconded by Drew. I think all in favor. Carried and the meeting is adjourned.